What up, though? This is Devontae Sanford, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. All right, we got Devontae Sanford on the porch with us today. What's the deal, bro? What's the deal, man? How you feeling, man? Lay back, bro. Lay back, chilling, man. For the show, for the show. It's a pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, man. No doubt. I mean, like. So what you getting into while you out here in Atlanta? Uh, I'm down here for that New Orleans and Saints game, man. Um, Boosie Road manager, man, um, popped at me, told me to pop out, come down here. So came down here, man. Just to, this is my first time down here to see the vibes. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm liking this shit. I'm feeling it a whole lot, for real, for real. For sure. How would you compare it back home to Detroit? Uh, I ain't really been out, but like everything I've been like seeing and vibing with, that shit really been like 100. So, but I, I really can't say like how much I could compare it to like back home because like that's something I, I didn't live there stay, you know, like I'm from, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That's I only been down here like two days. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? First of all, welcome home, my boy. I appreciate it. Appreciate For it. Sure. Appreciate how does it feel to be free once again, first of all? Uh, every day, man, I, I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Every day, I can't believe it. Uh, that shit still fuck with me to this day, but ultimately, you know, I, I feel blessed as fuck though, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. It's a blessing, it's a blessing for sure. So no, let's take it back yeah. to the roots of Detroit, right? How would you describe for somebody who wouldn't know or hasn't been there, the way of life out there in the culture of Detroit? Shit, Detroit is like any other city, you know? Um, got its problems, got its, got its good things, got its bad things and shit like that, bro. But man, I, I feel like being from Detroit is like a, that shit is like an honor, or oh, honesty, dog. Because since I'd have been home, I didn't, you know, I didn't move around, I didn't travel, I didn't live in Chicago, I didn't live in D.C., Arizona, Florida, uh, California. I didn't like bounced around, and every time I go, and every place I go to, and I tell them like where I'm from, it's like the respect like that they have for us is just be like crazy, like. I ain't even really got to say too much after that. Like, where you from? I'm from Detroit. Oh, damn. It's like, and it, it ain't nothing but genuine love. Everywhere I go, like, they love Detroit niggas. I ain't going to cap. Like, they fuck with us. For real, for real. You know, like, and I love that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because, you know, other, other cities and shit like that be having, like, fucked up names and shit like that. So, to have a name, you know, you being from the city, bro, and everywhere you go, niggas going to tap in and show you some genuine love. Like, that's real shit. Yeah. I ain't going to lie to you. How does it feel not only to like receive that love, but not only that, y'all got the spotlight on y'all with the music and shit going on right now too. So Detroit turned up. So how does it feel, you know, for the hometown to be like on the map right now? Uh, it feel good, man. Niggas deserve that shit, bro. Niggas working for it. Yeah. They putting the work in, bro. You know, um, shit, hell yeah, bro. I, I feel like you got to get credit where credit is due. I'm a real nigga. You know, yeah. them, them boys out there working. They putting that work in for real, so. You know, that shit gotta pay off some some type of way. You feel me? So hell yeah. Like I, I love seeing that shit. Real Especially shit. like my city. So hell yeah. Real shit. So how would you describe your childhood coming up in the city of Detroit? Uh my my shit, it it was kinda crazy, man, you know. Uh I, I lost my pops at like a young age. I lost my pops at like a young age and shit, like where he just bounced up and dipped. I had my uncle in my life, you know. Um I looked up to my uncle Hang and my pizza on the day, but like I look up to my uncle so much, you know. Uh, his name was Bump, and uh, in '99 he wound up getting killed. Him and his girlfriend, my uncle, he got shot 21 times. His girlfriend got shot 17 times and shit. And uh, that shit kind of like fucked with me, cause like after that I really didn't have a father figure for real. And uh, you know, I always had my mom, man. My mom was a was a strong, independent woman. Like she did whatever she had to do for us to make sure like we were straight and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you know, she dealt with she dealt with dudes and the dudes most of the time like that she dealt with was some stand up type niggas who made sure like her her and her kids was like good and straight, you feel me? So um, you know, typical little shit, neighborhood fights and little shit like that growing up and you know, yeah. So when would you say you decided to jump off the porch? Man. <laughs> I jumped off the porch probably like when I was like 10, 11. Yeah. For real. Hell yeah. Like no faking about 10, 11. So what's some of the bullshit you can say you done seen or been through from jumping off the porch at such an early age? 
shit. I remember one time <coughs> we was in the neighborhood <coughs> playing this shit called Man Hunt. And uh, it's when it's like, it's if it's 20 of y'all, y'all break down in two teams, 10 on 10. Niggas run through the neighborhood high, whoever find whoever. They, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta beat their ass type shit, you feel me? So one day, we in the neighborhood, we playing manhunt, and uh, we hiding in these abandoned houses. And through us hiding in these abandoned houses and shit, we just get to looking in them. We wind up coming across like some guns and shit. And we, we was some little young niggas, we ain't know what to do with them or nothing. So like, we ain't had no problems, we just, we just know we got these guns. Yeah. So we go to some, some older cats in our hood, and uh, we tell them, like, nigga, we got these guns and shit, whoop whoop And them niggas got down on us. <laughs> for real, like, we had an AK. Them, them niggas gave us $25 for it. <laughs> I swear to God, like, I'm not making this up. Uh, we, had, we had some shit, you feel me? Yeah, man, like, that was the first little time and shit. We thought we was the little shit, for real, like. But yeah, like, first little time on some shit, you know. Um, my mom's and shit, you know, I, I learned so much from her, man, so much game, bro, like, and shit. She um, unfortunately wound up being in like a house fire and she was in a coma and shit for like 30 days. So she wound up being like real, like, fucked up. And um, I had to go move with like some of my people for a minute, some of my older cousins. And no was like some like, I looked up to them as like real street niggas. Like they was doing real street shit, but they never let me and my brother like involved in that shit. Like, them niggas made sure we had allowance, like made sure we went to school. You know, them niggas would come pop in on us at school. I'd be in school doing my work. My cousin Boog would come pop in on that bitch. I'm like, what the fuck? This nigga's supposed to be the fuck? You know, but they never wanted that for us for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, my mama wind up bouncing back and shit. She wind up like falling, having some struggles and shit. And, uh, you know, nigga found the streets, you know, breaking in house, this little shit like that, trying to figure shit out. Nigga gon' eat, ain't no food in my refrigerator, what I'm finna do, you know what I'm right. saying? So, doing little shit like that, man, and yeah. Just trying shit. to figure it out. So when would you say you had your first experience when you realized the streets is real? Uh, my case, catching that case, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that night, you know, everything happened. I was literally on my way over a female house and shit, and uh, when I got snatched up by the police, you know what I'm saying, like going through that whole shit, that whole ordeal, that's when I knew like, yeah, the street's real type shit, you know? Uh, I ain't had shit to do with nothing for real, you know what I'm saying, and uh, just go through that shit. I was 14, they charged me what, four counts of first degree murder, four counts of premeditated murder, armed robbery, assault with intent to murder, felony firearm, and home invasion in the first degree. You know what I'm saying? I'm 14 looking at, what, 14 natural life sentences. You know what I'm saying? Each one of my charges held life. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was hard. So what type of effect would you say? I mean, like, I don't know, I'm gonna word that a different way. So, you on your way to a female house. Let's walk us through like the night you were arrested. Man, I was on my way to a female house and shit. She calling me, and uh, I'm thinking I was about to go over there and get some. I had been over there the night before, <laughs> and I was I, I, I was sucking her titties on the side of the house. I was a little young nigga, so to me, that was everything. <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I'm finna finally go get me some of this. And she, she like, yeah, you know, my mama sleep. So uh, I'm like, bet, I ain't have a phone at the time, so I was using my, uh, my sister, Pop's cell phone. So I'm like, shit, bet, I'm on my way over there. So. I go and start walking up the block. I lived on Beeland and she lived on Rowe. Like if anybody familiar with like Detroit, the East Side State Fair, that's probably like four blocks away from each other, if that, three. And um, she, on my way walking down the block, I'd seen this big ass canine. So I stopped and um, I seen that bitch had a leash on it though. Next thing you know, I see the, um, the fucking canine handler and I see two cops. They going from house to house. So I'm like, shit, I ain't got nothing to do with me. I keep walking. Then as I'm walking, they see me and they approach me and shit, get to asking me questions. 
where I'm from, what's my name, did I hear anything, where I live at, I'm like, should I live down the street, did this and that, I had on some pajamas and shit, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, shit, I'm on my way to row. they like, bro, why you, what you doing out here this late, little shit like that. So how did it progress from them just asking uh, you questions to you getting arrested? They had, they had called one of my, um, they had called an associate to, our, to my family and shit, an individual who said he knew me. And um, he like, shit, he be over there in that neighborhood. But I told them off back like, shit, I don't, I don't know nothing. They're like, we just want to take you down to question you. So they took me back home to, uh, to my house, to my, and um, at the time, you gotta think, like, my whole family situation was like fucked up. Like, we ain't even had those knives on our doors. You feel me? Like, we was, like, we was living like that for real. So, um, all the adults around me won really, you know what I'm saying? And they right state of mind for real, for real. So, um, they asked my grandma if they could speak with me. My grandma told them, yeah. So they took me and uh, they took me back to the crime scene. Gave me a gunshot ballistic test and shit. Then from there, they took me, got me something to eat. They like, you hungry? I'm like, yeah, nigga, I'm hungry. You know, took me to the Coney Island, got something to eat. From there, they took me down to the station on some shit. Yeah. So what was the interrogation like? Uh, the first night, it wasn't really like no interrogation like that for real. Uh, they came and wound up coming to pick me up a second time. And the second time was like, really like, was the uh, interrogation and shit. They got to showing me pictures of like the crime scene and the, the victims and all that shit. Like that shit still stuck with me to this day. Like no faking. Uh, got to showing me pictures of the crime scene. Got to telling me they found blood on my shoes and this and that. And so um, the second one was like, the second day they came and snatched me up. Um, I was on the couch sleep. They knocking. I, uh, my grandma let them in, they wake me up saying they need to talk to me. I'm like, shit, can I go grab my shoes? I go in the back, I grab my shoes, I come back, I sit on the couch. And they talking to my mama. They telling my mama like, you know, we think your son ain't being truthful with us, did this and that. I'm sitting there looking at my mama and her face crying to her. I don't know nothing. She is, she like, baby, tell, I don't know. What you want me to tell these folks? I don't know nothing. One there, what the fuck they want me to tell them? How can I tell them something I don't know, you know? I'm sitting there crying and shit, and they like, no, nah, we just we just want to talk to him one more time. So my mama like, no, nah, he got to be in school tomorrow. So the detective's like, look, we give you our word. We're going to make sure he at home for school tomorrow. We're going to make sure, like, we got you. We giving you our word. We're going to make sure he at home for school tomorrow. They took me, put me in the back of the car, and, um, shit, you know, they, they started questioning me. Then it, when we got to the station, went, they got to showing me pictures and all this extra some more shit. And it, it went from there, you know? So they ain't make sure you made it home? No, nah, facts. Some bullshit. Facts, facts, facts. Um, man, they lied, they falsified evidence, dog. They, they, they did me bold as fuck, I ain't gonna cap to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's, that's how I know like this shit real. And just me going through that and going through the system, you meet niggas and you know, hear about cases, niggas and caught it and they fighting and shit like that, dog. So that shit real for real, you know what I'm saying? Um, I wind up going to trial in the middle of a trial. Like in my case, it was, it was six victims all together. One of the victims wind up uh, surviving. I believe she got shot like, she got shot like nine times, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she came to court and, and lied and said she knew it was me. You know what I'm saying? A grown ass woman lied on a kid. I was a baby. That girl was like 30 some years old. You know, sitting there lying on me. Like, just, just let them people fuck my whole life up. But you know, it is what it is though, so. That's some bullshit. What did it feel like being inside the prison system at such a young age? Man, that shit was, it was crazy. It was difficult, but it was also a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I went to prison, like I did shit I ain't never did in my life. Like I read a book from cover to cover. I learned how to read and write in prison. Like prison, like that shit opened me up. It taught me how to 
you know, like move amongst men for real, for real. You know, I had to grow up quick as hell, like, because shit in there, like, real serious, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was, you know, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy for me. That's, that's why everybody called me, you know, badass, a BA, just off my name, you know, that to tell you yeah. what type of, you feel me, nigga I was in the, on the yard type shit. It was hard for me to adjust, bro. I ain't gonna cap. That should be hard for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Some people can just go and just lay down. I couldn't. Man, I, I, I just, I, it ain't feel right to me. Just going somewhere and just laying my head, knowing I'm supposed to be in this bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine, nigga, you ain't, you on the yard fighting for your life, but at the same time having to really fight for your life. Niggas ain't never been through shit like that. Like, that shit take a whole lot. That's how I'm special when I'm just, I'm just, you know what I'm saying, solid ass nigga. Yeah. Cause there was many niggas that came and, and, and checked out, ain't had the time I had, no nothing. You know what I'm saying, you know? Um, niggas in that bitch commit suicide, all type of shit, you know what I'm saying? And I, I just, I, I stood, you know what I'm saying? Like, on all them bitches, you know? Hell yeah, yeah. When it came to everything. It's one thing to be incarcerated for a crime you committed, but it's a whole nother one when you in there knowing you ain't do shit. You Facts. in there innocent. Facts. So what kept you sane most of the time? I ain't gonna cap real shit, my niggas. My, 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 my homies, my niggas on that yard, like them boys like held me on that bitch. You get what I'm saying? So like all my bros, like I had like all my bros, like for the most part, like throughout my whole nine and a half years, I say like my time, like I came across like some real solid niggas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and every yard I went on, I was always to like the youngest nigga. But due to the fact like niggas knew like, little homie ain't going. I'm, I'm beefing with COs. I'm getting into it with COs. I pop up on the CO. They like, oh, this nigga, you know, like, and it, it ain't matter who you was. I just, nigga, just respect me. And, and that wasn't even me just, trying to be in like on no tough shit, even though, you know what I'm saying? I was in that bitch game banging and everything. It was just like, shit, this is how it's gonna be for everybody. I don't give a fuck who you is type shit, you know? And um, them niggas, they, they kept me grounded in, in, in that bitch. For real, for real. You know, when it was times like certain, it got to a point, niggas like, man, go home. Even though I was game banging all that, my homies, nigga, go home. So I'm pop off on the yard, whatever. Nigga, badass, nigga, you ain't nothing. Nigga, go home. Nigga, you going home, nigga, fuck, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I knew I was around a, a, a bunch of real niggas. Cause I seen niggas in that bitch getting sent off on dummy crash, dummy missions, and catching cases, jacking paroles and all that. I had niggas around me trying to push me out the door for real, trying to better me and had me tighten up, you know what I'm saying? Mentally, spiritually, emotionally for the streets. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas knew like, I was innocent, you know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of niggas really, like, fuck with me and gravitated towards me. Like, niggas like, nigga, that's some whole ass shit, but you and this bitch, you know what I'm saying, making the best of what you working with type shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, hell yeah. How yeah. would you describe the way of life inside the prison system? Uh, depending on what yard you on, what, what like, I, I got STG2, I was STG1. In Michigan, that's some like serious third group shit. I got STG one probably like a, a year and a half after me being in prison and shit. Affiliate that's just like me affiliating with Bloods and shit. Being like, um, I was at this prison called Thumb for a little minute. That's where I got my name and shit. At being from there, they um, they sent me to this prison. They just shut this bitch down this month because it's, it's just so foul. They sent me to this prison called Michigan Reformatory, but niggas call that bitch Gladiator School. So like that's what they they was, you know they they try to send you there to break you, type shit. One man cell, small ass cell, like every day is popping off on the yard. So they try to send niggas there to really like check niggas temperature type shit. They sent me there, and you know they thought like that shit was gonna like scare me or something because it was niggas in that bitch you know that they were sending there. It was scaring them. It was I, that shit ain't scared me nigga. Like you know it was what it was you know, and uh. It, it was more difficult for me just off the simple fact my case was just so high profile. Like, nigga, I was fighting all the way from juvenile all the way into the prison system. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was points where, nigga, I was in a juvenile. Staff was putting hits on my head, having niggas come fight me because the people who was involved in my case was their family members. So I'm in that bitch fighting every day, 
coming out my cell, you know what I'm saying? Shit. That's the only way you're gonna eat in a juvenile. You gotta come out your cell to eat. I'm coming out to eat, nigga, fuck it. It is what it is, you know? So then like when I went and um, I wound up going to the yard, like that's when like shit really got, it got sticky for me. You know, like niggas put hits on my head, all type of shit in that bitch. Like no faking. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just blessed that I was able to make it about that bitch though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, you know, everything came to light type shit. So yeah. Real spill. Yeah, yeah. It's good to hear, like, you know what I'm saying, niggas like you, can you're able to stand 18 while being innocent and shit like that. So yeah. tell us about some of the stories you done seen when niggas folded. Man, I, countless. I know countless. Countless cases of niggas folding, man. I know countless cases of niggas got they man sitting in prison doing 30, 40 years and that bitch fucked up, ain't got a noodle, ain't got a, 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 a bar of soap to wipe his ass, but he doing his 30 because he, he stood solid for them niggas. And them niggas ain't doing nothing for him as people know nothing, countless cases. That's why I always tell niggas, like, especially like a lot of these young niggas, man, they moving in all these large groups. Bro, you don't need a million niggas to get rich, my nigga. Like, you don't, nigga, come on, you don't need a million niggas to get rich and move and, and to make some of yourself, for real, for real, on some real, on some real nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? You gotta think about it. I go out and I do something, yeah, I'm looking at 30, but I might not get 30 because I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I go out and do something with five, six niggas, I might get that 30 because somebody might not keep their mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah. You know, I, I move a certain way and shit like that because that shit real for real. You know, yeah. I, I done seen it happen to the best of them. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. Like, and some good niggas. Good niggas, man. Good niggas. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's just how the game go, though. You know? For real shit. What would you say is the craziest thing you've seen while inside? Man, I done seen crazy shit. I done seen niggas get stabbed and get eyeballs, took out all type of shit. Like, um, man, I remember one time we was going back and forth with some niggas on some shit and it was crazy, I tell you. This shit started all over a piece of chicken, my nigga. Like, nigga, <laughs> uh, like no faking. Yeah. Like, some homies brought some chicken, and long story short, the nigga didn't pay for the chicken. Nigga wind up getting a nigga cell ran in for some headphones. Nigga find out who headphone, whatever. Long story short, nigga, that war lasted for like eight months. That shit hit like nine yards type shit. Like, for real, for real, <laughs> no faking. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember one time we popped off on the yard, and, uh, Niggas on that bitch getting down, they pop the guns. Niggas still going, I'm still going. My homie's begging me to get down. Like, B.A., get down, I'm still going. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, fuck it. That's, you know what I'm saying? But I wind up getting down, though, type shit. We wind up going to the hole, road, road us out. Put me in, um, that's when I went to Max. I was in Max for like six and a half years, type shit. Um, it got to the point they had took my visit, so I wasn't able to see nobody in my, in my family, nigga, for like, in, in prison, nigga, for like seven, what, seven years they took my visits. So I was only able to see my mom and them when I came down on Ritz to the county, trying to f fight my case to try to like get back from prison, you know what I'm saying? So like that, that, that shit was hard for real, for real. Sent me to, um, they sent me to IMAX. I wind up going to IMAX, that was level five. They wind up STG and two of me as an enforcer recruiter and shit. One of my homies wind up talking, telling them, and shit, telling them I was second in command on the yard. And um, they rolled me out for that shit. Wind up going there, got into it. Uh, I wind up getting into an a, a, a incident when an individual got stabbed. And when he got stabbed and shit, uh, they couldn't find the knife, but they wind up finding the knife on the side of him. So he wind up like screaming, like, check the camera, check the camera. That ain't my knife, that ain't my knife. They went, checked the camera, they saw me. So, you know, he wind up telling on me and shit, on some scary shit. Threw me in a hole for that. I wound up doing like six months. I got out and uh, shit, I went right back like two days later. Then shit popped up, some shit popped off. I went right back, I did six months for that. And that was like the craziest time of my life. I had to get six months. I got out, I was only out for like three days. Uh, three guys wind up getting stabbed back to back on some shit. 
and they they hit me and like four other niggas on the NOI. Uh, a nigga wind up like being on some scary shit and telling on us. We was all locked down, and uh, you know how like niggas shoot words back and forth for fishing line. Like, they was doing like a major shakedown, so like he wrote some words up, basically like describing everything that was going on while niggas was getting stabbed, and he left it on his desk. So when the police came in and shaked his cell down, first thing they did was pick the paper up and read it. And they snatched everybody up, they snatched me up. I was in a whole, a whole year for that shit straight. And that, that, was, that was like the hardest time, I ain't gonna cap like. That was like, man, I was beefing with the guards, they was spitting in my food, ripping my mail up, ripping my grandma and big worry up and shit on me. Like, yeah. one let me come out, take showers. Shit was crazy that time, I ain't gonna cap. Then I wind up getting about that bitch. And uh, I stayed out for a nice little minute after that. Because at that time, like, I was just focused on getting out, coming home, man. Like, a lot of that shit had just got, like, played out, burnt out to a nigga for real, you know? And, you know, a nigga was, I was maturing. I was getting older in that bitch. For real, for real. I wasn't the same nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I started looking at shit, like, a lot different. And uh, shit. Next thing you know, I wind up being, um, they sent me across the bridge to Marquette. I was at Marquette for a little minute and shit. That's like a bitch so far up there. It don't make no sense. Sent me there. From there, uh, I went to the creek. I was at the creek for a day. And that's when I found out I was coming home and shit when I called my mama. That's why I was just getting ready to ask, right? So you were locked up for 15 years, right? Seven. I did nine and a half. Nine and a half, right? Yep. How did you find out you were coming home? And what was your reaction once you found out you were coming home? Uh, it was crazy. I had just hit the yard and shit. So when I hit the yard, I, uh, every day before I did anything, like I, I used to get violated sometimes for this shit. Because like when you hit the yard and shit, you instantly got to go check in and let the bros know you're on the yard so they know how many of us on the yard, who all on the yard, make sure niggas accounted for and shit. Like, you got to do that before you got to do anything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I would never, I wouldn't do that shit. I ain't give a fuck about no violation or nothing. For real, for real, like a couple laps, niggas that make you run a couple laps, a couple of extra workouts. Every day, first thing I did when I hit the yard, nigga, I used to call my old bird. I don't give a fuck, nigga, that's the first thing I'm doing. Got to hear a voice, you feel me? So I did that every yard. So it got to the point them niggas knew that's what I was doing. I'm on the phone with my old bird, you know what I'm saying? And they really wasn't tripping because, you know, old bird making three-way phone calls. And all them niggas genuinely love my mama, man. She made sure niggas was straight in that bitch. Like, niggas was, like, good for real, you know? And, um, yeah, she, I wind up hitting the yard. And uh, I called my mom. And my mom, she, uh... She picked the phone up crying and shit. So I'm like, damn, what's going on? She like, baby, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm like, what, what's up? I'm thinking something happened. She like, baby, you coming home. I'm like, what? She like, baby. She like, we pray, them prayers work. She like, baby, you coming home. You know what I'm saying? And my mom used to always be on my head about having faith. She like, baby, like you ain't gotta have a, a lot of it. I ain't saying that, but just have enough. And that enough gonna take you a long ways. And I, I, I rock with that to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, my mom's like, be, be, before I got locked up, bro, was in like a fucked up time in her life, bro. And me getting locked up, man, like that woman like changed her whole life around. My mama like a real, like warrior, like no faking for real. That's why like I respect her and her opinion and everything so much. Like, you know, she like all around just gangster and just thoroughbred with it for real and been through some shit, you know, and just still standing. So, um, she like, you coming home? I'm like, what? So she wind up putting one of my lawyers on the phone. My lawyer like, look, like, we working on it, you know, but it looked like you might be coming home. Like, we don't know. I'm like, all right, cool. They like, we got to see though. Because like, when I, was in, uh, when I was in prison, I wind up catching three cases back to back and shit. I wind up catching three assault cases. So it got to the point, like, when I was in that bitch, like, fighting to try to get out, like, a lot of officers and the, like, the prison didn't really like that. When they seen I had a chance, like, before, they used to tell me, oh, nigga, you gonna die in prison. 
da 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 like you a piece of shit, oot you boo, you a murderer. They used to hold me. So once they seen I had a chance, they really start disliking me then. Air little thing, they on my head trying to do some whole shit. So um, one time they wind up running in my cell on me. It was probably like eight of them. And I'm like, nigga, I'm like 160 pounds at the time. I couldn't do nothing with them boys, for real. These some grown ass men and that bitch beating my ass. But long story short, one of them wind up getting his shoulder broke. And uh, they hit me with a case for that. Then like they hit me with like two other cases. You know what I'm saying? Once they seen I had a chance to come home, they started trying to hit me with cases and shit to try to like um, longer my sentence and shit. And uh, what happened was my lawyers wind up having to pay some fines and I was able to come home. But my lawyer like, don't tell nobody did this and that. You on your way home and shit. So I'm believe I'm happy. I'm believing them, but shit, I done heard this a hundred times. Like I'm on my ninth year. I done heard this. Shit, you'll be home your 17th birthday. You gotta think. Nigga, my my 15th all the way to my 23rd birthday. Nigga, I was locked up. You get what I'm saying? So every it's like every birthday I was hearing this shit. It's like they just giving me this as a said this as a fake ass birthday gift. You should be home this year. They told me that when I was 17, they told me that I was 18, 19, 20. You know what I'm saying? Like I kept hearing that shit. So I was I was really taking it with a grain of salt for real. So when I hopped off the phone with her, they um they wind up calling my name over the PA and shit, calling my prisoner number out and shit. Told me to report to the yard shack. I went to the yard shack and uh, nigga, like five guards walk out. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm thinking they done ran to my cell and found something. What? I don't know. What the fuck? I'm like, what? They on some whole shit already? I only been here. I ain't even only been here at this yard for a day. <coughs> so my bros get to walking up like, What's going on? What's up? They like, man, y'all gotta get away from him. They like, what? The guy like, yeah, get away from him. He good. We got him. The guy like, bro, nigga, you going home today? I'm like, what? He like, nigga, you got camera crews, all type of motherfuckers out there. Come on, we gotta escort you up. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, damn, like. What a guy, that shit was, I couldn't believe it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. So what did it feel like once you walked out of those doors from that cell? Man, that shit felt, that shit felt so amazing, but so scary at the, like, at the same time because I was gone nine and a half years. You know what I'm saying, nigga? That, that's most of, nigga, my whole, like, Teen, preteen, all that. I'm, I was damn near, I was an adult getting out that bitch. And, you know, I was kind of scared of the world because I knew a lot of niggas that was getting out, coming right back and getting out, getting killed. I'm like, man, what the fuck is going on out there? Niggas out there, what the fuck? Like, niggas talking good, moving good in that bitch. Like, like okay, this nigga got a plan. He gonna, he gonna jump back, he gonna be good. Oh, right, bro. Bro, this called 20, uh, bro, you like, damn, uh, bro, you know? So that shit right there, you know what I'm saying? Like, really just scared of the unknown. Like, what the fuck, bro? You know what I'm saying? Just not really knowing, like, what? But I'm glad I had the support I had. Like, my whole city had my back. My family had motherfuckers all over the world who had my back and made show. And people to this day still make show, you know? Um, they know sometimes it be hard for a nigga and shit like that, but they still make sure a nigga remain focused and, and somewhat grounded out through this bitch for real, for real. I ain't gonna cap. Like, I got a good ass, like, support system for real, for real. Like, yeah, shit. I got some good niggas around me, man. Good, solid individuals. Like, nigga, my mama, my sister. I got my brother, you know, uh, my niggas on the yard. The niggas will never steer me wrong. Like, you know, other niggas, I got some, you know, so, yeah. That's, That's some it. real shit. Hell yeah. So how long did it take for you to adjust to freedom? Um, bro, I ain't gonna cat. Like when I first hopped in the car, my brother like, I, first person I talked to was my cousin, Wanisha. My brother like, uh, Wanisha on the phone, talk to her. Pete, I don't know shit about iPhones. 
I don't know shit about FaceTime. She on FaceTime. So he handed it to me. So he like, nigga, like, she on FaceTime. I put the phone up like this, like, what the fuck? <laughs> you good, woo woo? He like, no, nah, nigga. My little bro, like, no, nah, nigga, pull the phone back. Hold that bitch like this. You see her. I'm like, damn, this shit crazy. <laughs> so I'm holding the phone and shit, but I'm still want to put it into my ear because yeah. that's what I'm used to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm used to putting that bitch up to my ear. So I'm like, what the fuck? Then I'm trying to put it right now. Nah, man, hold that bitch. She can see everything around type shit. So that right there. You know what I'm saying? Adjusting and shit like that. Um, that 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 shit was different. That shit was different, man. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was different for real. I ain't gonna cap, but like, shit, just like the support system I had around me, bro. I had like some good, great people. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had some great people, solid people around me. For sure. Type shit. I had a little chick, man. She was um, she was like a part of my legal team, fighting to get me out and shit. And um, I wind up, we wind up like start like liking each other and shit. And when I got out and shit, she was right there waiting for a nigga. And, and she was just so real and genuine. She made sure a nigga was straight. Shot me to DC with her, had me doing shit I ain't never did in my whole life type shit. Like what the fuck? Showing me like nigga, it's a world out here type shit. So yeah. That's real yeah. shit. Hell yeah. What's the first thing you did once you were free? I ate. Some uh, some Chinese food. <laughs> That's my favorite food. Ate some Chinese food. Uh, but before that, my little nephew, Murmur, like that's my baby. That's my little sister son. I was locked up when he was, you know what I'm saying, when he was born. And me and we used to talk on the phone and shit. He used to send me pictures and all that of him. Like one of the first things I did was I went and I walked him down the block, just kicking him with him on some real nigga shit, having a conversation with him. I think that's why we've been so like this ever since type shit, for real. Like, just kicking him with him, having a conversation with him on some real nigga shit, you know? So, that's some yeah. real shit. So how surreal was it to you that not only you were free, but the reason why you were free is a crazy ass story, you know what type I mean? Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, how did you react once you found out why you were free? and tell the world why you became free. Yeah, like look, two, I was free, man. Uh, a Vincent Smothers, bro, hitman from my city and shit. He wound up confessing to the murders that I was in prison for. But the crazy part about it is he, he wound up confessing like two weeks after I went to prison. So I was in prison for like two weeks already. When he confessed, the police like, no, you couldn't have did that. We got somebody in prison for this shit already. A 14-year-old. Come on, man. Make this shit make sense, right? And, uh, you know, he gave them details. They still didn't want to believe it. But they just didn't want to believe it because they knew they fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And um, that nigga a solid nigga to me, you know? Dog got his issues and shit like that or whatever. But, you know, I don't hold nothing against him just off the simple fact. It's because of him I got a son. It's because of him, nigga, I can take care of my family. And, you know, like, we can live and we can, like, better ourselves mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Fuck just the money. That ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to come with, you know what I'm saying, with just, you know what I'm saying, as long as you moving right. But just all in all, like, nigga, my family back together because of that man. I got a whole son because of that man. You know, I, I forever be grateful. You know what I'm saying? You know, that nigga ain't had to do that, mind you. I just told you, I done seen stories where niggas ain't come, you know, niggas ain't laying down for niggas for cases just because they solid and it's they man's, you know, and they and that bitch fucked up. You get what I'm saying? They tried to get him like 22 years not to come and testify for me, bro. That nigga took and turned that shit down. He like, no, I'll let that little nigga out of prison. He innocent. You know what I'm saying? And he, he stood on that shit. That's why I always respect him. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. He, he fought and did that for a nigga. You don't know many niggas out here that's doing shit like that. You feel me? You 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 know a nigga right now that admit to some shit that he did that you locked up for? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You ain't got too many niggas out here like that, man. Right. For real, bro. It ain't too many niggas like that right now, man, out here, man. Real Streets shit. fucked up. I'll still be in that bitch right now, bacon. If it was up to any other nigga, I'll still be in that bitch, bacon, man. You know, so yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So talk about the mishap that led you to losing your eye once you returned home. 
Mm -mm. That shit happened way before. I was a little young nigga. I probably had to be like eight, I think, or something. Nigga, we got this shit in the city called um, Devil's Night, but they switched it to Andrew's Night to put a positive twist on it. But it's like the night before Halloween, niggas go through the city and like they used to like burn up houses and shit like that. But we young niggas, we ain't burning up houses, we egg and shit, we tissue paper and shit. So everybody went to the crib and had, we had grabbed cartons of eggs from the crib. From they, I think my mama just went grocery shopping. I took a whole carton. She was mad I the was next gonna morning. Say, boy, I know she was God, she about was them eggs, boy. Like who the fuck took the mother? So <laughs> I took some, I took some eggs and some tomatoes. So everybody had to hit their crib for something. Niggas came out that bitch with motherfucking um, <laughs> potatoes, all type of apples, all type of. We like we finna fuck some shit up tonight. So we see a bus. We wind up fucking this bus up. Like the bus stop at the bus stop. We're like all right, soon they open the door. He open the door. We get the fucking the bus up. <laughs> everybody take off and shit. Boom. I hear I hear my man's who did it. You know, me and this nigga used to be best friends. I ain't gonna cap, like he was my man growing up. We used to be best friends, but like now when we see each other, it'd be like, you know, because of this shit. And it don't even be that, it's just like, one day he told some hoes, like I guess to try to like get some like coochie points or something, like he did it on purpose, but he didn't do it on purpose. You feel me? Like everybody know it was never, it was, nigga, it was an accident. So I'm walking and shit, everybody walking. I hit a nigga like, I am finna crack this nigga man with an egg. So I go to turn around and was like, don't do it. By that time he threw it, that bitch hit me straight in my eye. Bow. Mm -hmm. The shell got stuck all the way in my shit. Ooh. You get what I'm saying? So they had to pull that bitch out. And as they was pulling it, it was cutting my cornea. My cornea was scarred and shit, but my shit was straight. You know what I'm saying? And um, they like, look, those shit gonna heal or whatever. You just can't play no hard sports for like six months. And they wanted me to wear a patch. And I ain't like wearing a patch, bro. That shit was so lame, bro. I used to fight. Niggas used to have them iron jokes and pirate shit. So I'm in that bitch fighting in school and shit. And I had this, I had this teacher, I ain't gonna cap, and I love her to death. Like, cause like she supported me throughout my whole like journey, nigga, fighting, trying to get out of prison, nigga. She wrote, wrote me, sent me letters, all type of shit. Um, I had a I had a teacher named Miss Carwell. And when I never used to, uh, when I never used to like bring my patch out a lot, like when I lost that bitch, nigga, she had a patch at school for me, waiting. So if I ain't bring my patch to school, I'd be like, man, I lost that bitch, I don't know where it's at. Nigga, she would go right in her drawer, whip that patch out and be like, put that patch out. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate her for that shit. <laughs> but I love her though, cause she a nice yeah. sweet lady though. I ain't gonna cap, I love her to death. And niggas, niggas, you know, my niggas and them used to be in that bitch laughing and shit. And uh, before I leave, she had made sure I give it back to her all that. But long story short, and like when I was in school, they ain't let me play like no hard sports or nothing. So when I go home, that's, that's the only type of sports I was playing. I'm in the hood one day, we playing dodgeball. I wound up getting smacked in my face, nigga, with the dodgeball on some shit. And that bitch, it fucked my shit up. And I started getting surgeries. I had got like three, like, like three surgeries back to back. I'm a young nigga getting all these surgeries on my eye and shit. I really, I, I ain't like it for real. That shit was keeping me out of school, all type of little weird shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm on all these, nigga, I was taking like 18 eye drops a day. All type of little shit, like got me on all these medications, having seizures and shit. Like, I ain't like it. Like, I can go and get it fixed, but it's just who I am, you know? Like, plus, like, shit, the whole, they, they love it. Like, yeah. females love it. So, like, why not? It worked. It worked, you what know? What you talking about? Swear to God, like, why not, you know? So, talk about the impact you left on Detroit City, man. Uh, I try to leave a positive one, man. Uh, 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 it ain't about where you come from, it's about where you going, dog, you know? Uh, looks can be deceiving, my nigga. I ain't supposed to be here right now, nigga, on off the porch, nigga. I'm supposed to be in that bitch right now, nigga, on the bunk. <laughs> no faking, nigga. I'm on off the porch right now, bro. You know, uh, looks can be deceiving, you know? Niggas thought I was finished, it was up, it was old, like, you know, but I had that faith and I, I that little hope and shit, that shit, 
it, it, it brought me this far. So I'm gonna keep pushing, you know? I got some solid motherfuckers around me, man, just trying to move forward and build something. Leave like a good positive legacy, dog. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and show little young niggas around me, bro, like a, a, a better positive life. You know, uh, fuck the street shit. You know, that, that street shit played out for real, bro. Like, it ain't nothing in them streets for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, since I came home, I, I wouldn't say I ain't been in like the positive nigga yet. I ain't been caught up. I ain't been shot, all type of shit. So that's how I know, like, it ain't shit in them. Nigga, since I've been home, nigga, I, done, I lost my step pops on some shit, you know? Uh, nigga, my step pops ain't never missed a court date. Like, like, that nigga ain't never missed a court date. Like, he used to, like, when it, when it came to shit, certain shit, nigga, when I did reach certain yards, niggas had me because of who my step pops was. Like, no faking. Just off, like, nigga, that's, yeah, that's, you know, he good. Older niggas and shit, when I used to find myself in sticky situations, you know what I'm saying? Niggas respected, like, off the respect they had for my step pops and shit, you know? So, it was fucked up, you know what I'm saying? Losing him, getting out. Um, I was actually on my way to Chicago to, to, to speak at a college. And, uh, and I'm laying up on my way, about to be on my way to the airport, got the call and shit. He, um, you know, wind up getting killed and shit, man. It's fucked up, but you know, that's, that's life, you know. Or in spill. Talk about hitting the city of Detroit for 7.5, though. Man, like, oh, honestly, to me, That like, million, by the way, you got to make sure them folk know that. Yeah, like, to me, like, it was never about the money or honesty. It was just about these motherfuckers. Like, shit, just let a nigga know, man. Some simple shit, nigga. Let me know, nigga. Y'all bad, y'all fucked up. Nigga, y'all still ain't even did that for real, low key, you know? Uh, prosecutor, she still won't admit, man. She's sending young black guys to prison right and left. And everybody thinks just because she black, she for us, man. Just because she black, that don't mean a damn thing. She railroading us, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't the only one she sent to prison wrong for convicted. If it was niggas before me, it's gonna be niggas after me, man. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to like uh, cause an awareness to that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and let niggas know, bro. Like, just like basic shit. Like, I got, I'm finna launch the basic shit. Know your rights. Like, a lot of niggas don't even know they Miranda the rights and shit like that. Don't even know, you know, got the right to remain silent. Anything I say can and will be used against me in the court of law. I got the right to an attorney. If I can't afford one, one will be appointed. Shit like that. I know that shit from the back of my, like them folks never, you know what I'm saying? Like, they already know, like, there's been plenty of times, like, police didn't try to catch up with me in the city, and they already know, like, <laughs> he ain't going. Yeah. <laughs> like, he ain't going to have that one. Because I didn't, I didn't been there, I didn't done that, you know? And that's how a lot of young niggas be getting caught up, just not knowing, like, the basic shit, you know what I'm saying? And the basic shit would lead, you know what I'm saying? So I'm big, you know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah. Real shit. Would you say all the pain and suffering you suffered and caused your family, would you even say the money was worth it? Was the money? Fuck no. Fuck no. I'm going to be real with you. Like, nigga, I didn't, nigga, I'm still going through shit to this day. Like, nigga, my family's still going through shit to this day. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can't even, I can't even move how I want to move in my city to this day for this shit, over this. You know what I'm saying, nigga? And I'm innocent for real, but at the end of the day, you know, like streets and all this. So, you know, um, yeah, like, fuck no, hell no. You know, uh, did, did, did it saw some things and all that and all this? Yeah, but at the end of the day, nigga, that's, that's something that a nigga shouldn't have to fight for. For real, for real, nigga. Y'all know y'all fucked up at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So a nigga, a nigga shouldn't even have to be fighting for the, this type of shit. This shit, a nigga shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I came home, like they, they wrote me a $15 check. It's like the city had my back, though. Like, the city made sure I had jobs, crib, all that. Like, you know, so that's why, I, like, I love my city. Like, I ain't gonna cap. Like, nigga, my city, like, nigga, I, I, I go through shit. And, like, nigga, my city be, be like, they be behind me, nigga. Like, no faking. They be like, nigga. You know, uh, that's why I fuck with my city and I, and I give back as much as I can to my city, you know? Uh, so much for real, for real. I ain't gonna cap. That's some real shit. Like, hell yeah, nigga. I, I love my city, man. Like, 
Um, shit, nigga, without my city, I don't think I, I would have made it this far, for real, for real, like, for real, for real. I ain't gonna cap, like, when I say, like, nigga, I feel like it's an honor being from Detroit, that's real shit. You know, yeah, we got a lot of shit that go on in the city and shit like that or whatever, whatever, but man, like, nigga, the city's something special. Being from the city, nigga, that's something special. And being from the city and being able to make it about that bitch, you even special art, my nigga. You feel me? Because, like, we all know what it's like in that bitch for real, for real. So, hell yeah. How important is fatherhood to you? Man, it's everything. It's everything. Like, no cap. Uh, nigga, I, I, I love the fuck out my son. Nigga, I named my son, my son a junior. You know what I'm saying? Just because, like, when he go and he able to look back and see, how my daddy named me after him. Yeah, nigga, this where you come from. Look, look what your pops had to go through to get you here. You know what I mean? You a whole blessing, boy. You got a story behind you now. Now you go take that and make some of that. It's all about legacy building. You know what I'm saying? And like that, that foundation and making sure that bitch strong and it ain't gonna never go nowhere. It can't move. As long as that bitch solid, that bitch ain't gonna never go nowhere. You good. You know That's what I'm saying? Real. So hell yeah. If you can go back, what would you tell your 14 year old self? Uh, Shit. Not to go outside. I don't think I would've went outside. You feel me? But shit, like, man, I done been through it though. You know, like, I done learned so much and just so like, I, I look at the situation that I done been through. I look at a lot of people like, why you ain't mad and bitter and shit? I look at that shit as a blessing, man. That shit opened my eyes. You know, I got homies that's doing 30s and 40s that they can't come up off of. Cause they didn't did that, yo, whatever, whatever, you feel me? And mine was, I'm able to come up off, I was able to come up off that bitch. Nigga, I gave back 40 years. You know what I'm saying? I gave back 40 fucking years, man. Like that shit, it's, it's, it's everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm able to, to live and be free and to wake up and to do anything I want to do. You know what I'm saying now, without like a worry, hell yeah. Make sure nigga my family straight, my son straight, you know? Like, I'm, like all my niggas on that yard, take care of them. Like, that's all I really like care about for real. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to make sure everybody around me got something. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. For sure. What is it the message that you want to leave behind listeners with your story? Man, to them young niggas that's out here rushing, one day, one step, sometimes the slow way is the best way, bro. Uh, niggas out here crashing and all that, man. Just, man, take your time, bro. Um, figure some shit out, man, and, you know, move forward from there, my nigga. You know, uh, watch the niggas around you. And, uh, shit, lead. Just don't lead yourself into a wall, my nigga. Lead yourself into greatness. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I say for real, for real. On some real shit. For sure. You know, uh, look at my situation as an eye opener. But I know a lot of niggas that got homies who ain't, you know, able to do this right now. You know, they sitting on them bumps. You know what I'm saying? So look at this as, damn, you know what I'm saying? An opportunity for real to really try to take some, something from this interview, man, and like move forward and learn, you know what I'm saying? Just move a little bit differently or whatever, bro. For real, for real. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. So what else you working on right now? Man, I got my own nonprofit, 501c3, uh, Innocent Dreams. Um, I got my YouTube. I'm working on that right now. Um, I ain't gonna cap, man. I'm, I'm working, bro. I ain't, I'm, I'm trying to build something, something strong, solid, put everybody on around me and, and just, you know what I'm saying? My nigga, like, shit, do everything life was meant to do, which is living. You know what I'm saying? Uh, stay out the way. Uh, invest. You know what I'm saying? Build wealth, generational wealth, and just and chill for the most part, for real, bro. You know? For real spill. Any last words and shout outs? Uh, man, shout out to the whole city. I love, I love my city. Shout out to the city. Uh, shout out. To all my niggas on that yard, man, y'all boys, hold y'all head, dog. Um, all the ones coming off the yard. Um, everybody follow me on Instagram. Devontae uh, underscore Sanford underscore ID. 
Uh, shit, man. We got music coming soon with Lil Bro. Eastside Hippies, Belly Bell. He got some shit he working on. My nigga Baby P. He got some music he working on. Uh, I like, like, follow my YouTube. Got my YouTube. For, you know, just working, man. They're just trying to put everybody, you know what I'm saying, in a position of working. Do something, turn up on some shit for real, for real. Hell yeah, yeah. Real spill, man. We appreciate having you on the portion and sharing your story with us today, bro. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Okay. Gang. Okay.